Welcome to the channel, everyone. Today I'm going to be analyzing another very high-level game by two grandmasters, as white as Alexander Moisinko, who at the time of the game was 2703, and as black as Darwin Lalo, who at the time of the game was 2497. Okay, let's begin the game, but before I begin, please subscribe and hit that notifications bell to stay updated. Every time I post a new video. Road to 300 subscribers, guys. Let's go! Okay, white began with d4. Now we have knight of 6. c4, g6. White developed his knight to c3. Black played d5. This is the Grunfeld defense. White took on d5. Knight takes d5. e4. Knight takes c3. He takes c3. Bishop g7. White gave a check with his queen on a4. If you remember in a previous video, I had another position with this opening. So please check that out as well. And here, black went knight d7. In the other video, black went queen d7. Also, bishop d7 is possible, as well as c6. There's lots of different options for black, but knight d7 is a perfectly good move. Now white developed with knight f3. Also a perfectly good move. C5. The whole idea of the Grunfeld is black gives white the center. But he tries to undermine it with moves like C5 and the bishop on G7. tries to attack it and normally he puts his knight on C6. So anyway, bishop E2 just developing the bishop into a good spot. Black castled. White castled. Black took the pawn on D4. White took back on D4 and now... The bishop is pinned to the rook with a pawn, so that's why knight c5 is possible. And now white took on c5 anyway, letting black take the rook on a1 now. And now white played an important move, e5. Now the bishop can't retreat to g7, and black's king could become weak because the bishop isn't defending it. Also, the bishop on a1 could be attacked by the rook. Also, bishop h6 is coming, so f6. Bishop h6, attacking the rook and the bishop. So, of course, a move like rook e8 is not possible because the bishop's undefended. So, bishop takes e5, white took back on e5, f takes e5. Currently, black is up in exchange at a pawn, but not at all a problem for white. White is better here. Rook d1, attacking the queen. Black went queen e8, queen c7 would have been a better move. Anyway, queen e8, bishop c4, check. Just giving it a check. No rush for taking the rook. The rook is not going anywhere. H8. And now bishop e5. This is a slight mistake. c6, which is a really nice move, would have been better. Now if queen takes c6, queen takes c6, b takes c6, bishop takes f8, is obviously not a very good way to play for black. And if b takes c6, white has this incredible move, queen a5, and white is completely winning here. He's attacking e5, and also he's threatening bishop takes f8, queen takes f8, rook d8, winning the queen. So, for example, if black goes bishop f5, and then queen takes e5, check. And now when he blocks with the rook, white has this incredible move, rook d6, and white is dominating. For example, if black takes the rook, then this is checkmate. And the fact is, he can't actually protect the rook, so next move, white's going to take on f6, and... So this is a total disaster for black. So that would have been a really good way for, to play for white, but bishop e5 still gives white a nice advantage. Black went queen f7, and finally white captured the rook on f8. Queen takes f8. Black is probably really happy. He's up a pawn. It's an incredible pawn. He's up a pawn. It's a doubled pawn, but still it's a pawn. So black is probably really happy with himself, even though his queen is on f8, his rook is on f8, and obviously he's not that happy with the pawn. Like, black is up a pawn, but white has a lot of compensation, so white's position is good, and he shouldn't be worried that he's down a pawn. And now, queen e4, just attacking the pawn, trying to take it back, and now black went bishop f5, which was good, just giving back the pawn, which was the right decision for development, and if a move like queen f6 or something, then rook d8, and white has a lot of compensation, so that would not be very good for black. Bishop f5, strong, queen takes b7, rook b8, queen a6, just defending the bishop, 
if queen takes a7, rook takes b5, that's a disaster for white, so queen a6 is good. Queen c8, and white played c6, the pawn is now in the sixth rank. Queen c7, if he takes the queen, then white takes back, and c7 seven is coming, and it's winning for white. So queen c7 is also correct. Queen a4, with the idea of queen c4 or something, just proving the queen. Rook b6, and white went queen c4. Black went king g7, just bringing the king out a little bit. There's really much for black, he's worse here. h3, just making sure that white has an escape score with the king, so there's never going to be any back rank mate. And also, maybe in the future, he'll go g4. Also, there's a bunch of rush, because black doesn't have a huge amount of resources. King f6, queen h4 check. King back to g7, and queen c4. White just repeated to gain the time of the clock and show black that he's totally in control of the position. King back to f6, and obviously white does not want to draw here. It's clear that white is better pawn c6, better pieces. You want bishop a4 with the idea of going to b3 with the bishop and improving pieces. Bishop b6, attacking the queen, queen back to c2, rook b4. Just trying to get some counterplay with ideas like rook c4. So bishop b3, correctly stopping all those moves. Bishop takes b3, pawn takes b3, rook d4, because white's idea is rook d7, followed by pushing the pawn. So rook d4 is blocking, which is also needs to do that. Rook c1, not trading rooks, protecting the pawn, and it's better. Rook d8, b4, here comes the next pawn, queen b6. Queen c4, slight mistake. c7 would have been better, but queen c4 is still winning, so not a problem. King g7, queen e6. Here comes the queen, just improving even more, and also attacking e5 and, and uh, e7 and threatening stuff like c7. So queen c7 stops all those moves, but it's, it's still lost for black. e5, rook f8. And now rook d1, coming in with, to the seventh rank. Next move, rook f6. And now the final move, rook d7. Black decided it was enough and resigned because if rook takes e6, rook takes e7, this pawn is going to fall, followed by pushing this pawn. So, and if he does some random move with the queen, then queen takes e7 is over because this rook is in trouble and he's going to be mate somewhere. So, D7, that was game over. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, please tell me in the comments below. I'll do my best to reply to all you guys. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications bell to stay updated every time I post a new video. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye!